<laughs> Grenada is one of those unique intersections along the world cruising route. It is at the end of many roads and at the start of something new. Like Phuket in Thailand and Opua in New Zealand. Boats have sailed long distances to get here and owners are faced with several choices. Do they still get along together as crew? Still like their boat or want a bigger one? Continue on across the Pacific or return the way they came? Should they put the boat up for sale or, if the money hasn't run out, just stay here indefinitely? The number of boats on hard stands or in storage here is testimony to the difficulty of these decisions for many. Our search for a suitable place to hard stand lucky fish for the hurricane season continued along the south coast of Grenada. From True Blue we anchored one bay east at Prickly Bay and checked out the Spice Island hard stand and rates. The girls had really got the fishing bug and spent time making lures for next season. In all we had landed nine good sized fish in the previous three weeks, enough to easily take care of all of our protein requirements. From there we travelled east again, this time stopping at the anchorage of Hog Island. We wanted to check this spot as it's a well-known hurricane hole where boats tie up to the mangroves. It's also a very pretty and peaceful anchorage most of the time.
It was cool to see this Spronk designed equal masted schooner still operating here after many years. She still looks beautiful. We took the dinghy over to check out the brand new Clark's Court Bay Marina, something we'd been hearing a lot about since Beckway. Their special opening offer rate of about $400 per month dry stand storage was very appealing, so we brought Lucky Fish around the next day. The sailor's place of worship in Clark's Court Bay, if not the whole of Grenada, is Nimrod's Rum Shack. Although it does have to compete very occasionally with a real church just across the road. Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom and cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip. Toya and I were getting ready to get back to civilization. I had heard about a natural skin scrub using a coffee grounds and wanted to try it. So we had been saving our coffee grounds for a while for this. Dried coffee ground exfoliation, is that it? And uh, is it going to change your skin colour? Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to smooth your skin. Uh, yeah, smooth skin. Beg your pardon? Oh yeah, I like smooth skin. Fascinating. Toya, will you be doing the coffee ground experience afterwards? <laughs> Maybe. All right. Oh, I'll save some video. I'll save some space. <laughs> Three days to go. Three days till we go on the hard. We booked our haul out at Clark's Court and began preparing the boat for storage and doing some minor repairs.
Emptying the lockers for cleaning gave me a chance to check out what effect storing our fairly light loads in different locations had on the trim of the boat. So, after six months and over 6,000 miles, Lucky Fish came out of the water for a well-deserved rest and some TLC. Here you can see how little windage there is on the Warham and those skinny hulls with high bridge deck clearance. She really looks so slippery compared to other cats. The copper coat was performing exactly as advertised. This growth from the last month as I hadn't wiped the hulls down. Well, we thought that was the end of the season for us, but then this happened. But that will have to wait for another video. We hope you enjoyed this episode and would like to help us make more productions. If so, please don't forget to subscribe and consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a video. Thank you for watching. Anyway. Lucky fish punch. Lucky fish punch. Once we left the coast of Africa, there would be no turning back until we arrived in the Caribbean. The first leg would be 1,200 nautical miles.